Hello friends, welcome you all to the 21st session of ARM based development. So in this uh, lecture we will cover the coprocessor instructions ok. So in the last session we saw how uh, any coprocessor is interfaced with ARM ok and what is the signal interaction between them ok. Now in this talk I will cover specifically about various type of instruction that are supported ok. Now based on the coprocessor these instructions can be redefined the mnemonics can be different, but they all fall under these three categories what I am going to be showing ok. So these are the three categories of instructions which we will be talking about today. So any floating point coprocessor or a DSP coprocessor or any other encryption coprocessor anything they need to fall under the instructions they, they need to fall under any of these three categories and they have freedom to use these three categories to put in their particular instruction which will be given along with the ARM, ARM instructions ok. So the tool which is the assembler which is compiling uh, which is assembling this instruction need to be aware of these instructions and then they will generate equivalent encoding based on what ARM has defined ok. So uh, with this introduction let us go into the instruction format and then various uh, specific details about instructions and then we will touch upon the fundamental three categories of instructions ok. So coprocessor data processing instruction the name itself clearly says this is something to do with the specific functionality of a coprocessor. Okay, so we are back into again the 32 bit format of instruction. Okay, so it is the condition code is similar to what we saw in ARM instructions, the same coding, okay, which is which was followed in ARM is followed here also, and then this is unique pattern which distinguishes that this is a coprocessor instruction. Okay. Once the ARM processor looks at this pattern, the shaded portion which are in blue, this is all not meant for ARM processor to encode, decode ok. So this is all specific to the coprocessors. So as soon as ARM looks at this, it will not even look into these bits because it is you cannot make out anything from this because it is very specific to the coprocessors which are taking this instruction and processing it ok. And then this is another unique uh, bit pattern which which differentiates between the CDP instruction data processing instruction and then which one I will be showing at the end register transfer instruction. So between ARM coprocessor and ARM uh, so based on this bit pattern it decides that this particular instruction is coprocessor instruction ok. So as I told you in the last session while the ARM is decoding it and trying to understand this instruction the same instruction is being decoded by the coprocessors also and then when this instruction enters ok any instruction enters the execution stage and then this condition code is um, satisfying then ARM will generate the NCPI signal if you remember ok it will make this low to indicate to all the coprocessors in the system that uh, there is one in you no know, coprocessor instruction which I have found and which is in the execution stage uh, you know execution stage and then the coprocessors inform back with the CPA that is coprocessor absent and coprocessor busy signals to indicate whether it is any of the coprocessor willing to take that instruction or not once they take it up then ARM um, no goes forward if it is a data processing instruction it goes forward but if it has to be there for servicing some instruction it will stay there in the execution stage we will talk about that ok in this instruction. Now when the CDP instruction is 
seen it is supposed to be handled by you no know, this is supposed to be handled by the coprocessor so once some coprocessor takes this instruction that means it responds back saying that you no know, i am going to take it up and if it has to it doesn't have to wait the arm arm processor will carry on with the next instruction otherwise we it will do a busy wait okay i will show you the example so the instruction is executed if the condition is true the class of instruction is used to inform a coprocessor to perform some internal operation so what kind of internal operation that is specified by this bit and this bits okay these are two types coprocessor type as well as the coprocessor operation and then this is coprocessor registers uh, one of the operand registers and this is one of the coprocessor operand register and this is the destination register inside the coprocessor so anything appended with the c indicates that they are coprocessor registers and what is this this is coprocessor number it can vary from 0 to 15 that's why four bits are given so based on this cpid the coprocessor id a specific coprocessor in the system will acknowledge it saying that i am taking this instruction okay and then they will know that these are the bit patterns they need to interpret and then accordingly perform the operation okay so whatever i am showing it in the color coding is whatever i am showing it in blue is the parameters which are meant for coprocessors and ignored by arm similarly coprocessors ignores these bit patterns and then they look at the other patterns which are specific to them okay so here no result is communicated back to arm okay arm will not wait for the operation to complete see it will wait for the instruction to be taken up by coprocessor if there is a coprocessor present in the system but it is busy because of something else then arm will wait and once the instruction is taken up by the coprocessor arm will carry on with the next instruction the coprocessor could contain a queue of such instructions awaiting execution so suppose arm is here a coprocessor is here and it has confirmed the back saying that okay i am taking this instruction now it may not have to execute it immediately because it may have a fifo of okay it may maintain a fifo of instructions okay so whatever instructions it is reading from the data bus okay it may keep it in the fifo and then it will execute it internally that is also quite possible okay so this why is it required suppose i told you in the last class also some example of you know you assume that there is a floating point r and then followed by floating point maybe subtract and then floating point mul suppose these are all all the cdp instruction you agree because these are all something processing to be done by the coprocessor and it will be done among you know using the registers of the coprocessors it is nothing to do with the arm registers okay arm is here the coprocessor suppose it is a floating point coprocessor okay so these instructions will be executed by the coprocessor using the registers mentioned in the operands which are actually inside the processor now actually speaking the arm doesn't have to wait for this instruction to be completed why because they are all internal to the arm the coprocessors and they can take their own sweet time in completing it as long as the any of the results do not affect the flow of the arm code okay arm is executing some code and then these are instruction suppose the results of this are not immediately needed to control the flow of the arm code then arm can continue with the execution of the remaining instruction but that is not possible if these instructions are not accepted by the coprocessor now assume there is a you know two stage fifo okay only two stage two instructions can be in the fifo and one can be in the execute stage then if suppose when these arm instructions were executed and then why when this f add was given to the coprocessor coprocessor was not busy so it accepts it that means f add goes into the execute stage and then two stage fifo may accept these instructions because fifo 
will keep the instructions pending for to be executed by the coprocessor. So this will go into the FIFO, okay, and then this will also go into the FIFO. See, once these instructions are accepted by the coprocessor, then the execute stage of the ARM becomes free. Then ARM can take the some other ARM instruction. Suppose there are followed by ARM instructions. They are all specific to the internals of ARM, and now you can carry on with that. So this is what I am explaining. That is quite possible that the coprocessor may have a FIFO, and then they may keep accepting it. But what happens if the FIFO becomes full, and still the coprocessor is not able to, no, is not able to accept any more instruction? Then what happens? The ARM has to wait because you know once the instruction is not accepted by the coprocessor, if it ARM continues with the executing the next instruction this is lost, so it should be either accepted by the coprocessor or the exception handle should be hand you know, called, so if any one of this condition is true only the ARM will continue with the execution, so there is a FIFO possible ok, their execution can overlap other activity allowing the coprocessor and the ARM to perform independent tasks, so ARM is doing its own processing and the coprocessor is doing its own job so they are all running in parallel that you should keep in mind that is the advantage of having coprocessors if if ARM and coprocessor are not running in parallel then we are not having the benefit of you know uh, designing a hardware specifically for processing the coprocessor instruction. CDP instruction is not available in thumb state see any coprocessor instruction is not available in thumb state for that matter but I am making a statement clearly saying that this are not available in thumb state ok, that means you in the thumb state you cannot introduce the in between the CDP instruction, CDP is a coprocessor data processing input ok, now I am just explaining the big patterns the 21 to 31, 24 to 31 this whole thing is meant for ARM and then 4 also is interpreted by ARM ok, the remaining bits are used by coprocessor, the above field names are used by convention ok, these are all used by convention but the coprocessor designer can free to use it in any way you want, they can even you know decide to merge these two or they can you know swap any other locations, but the location of this ok is fixed, can you see the reason behind this, see let us again go back to our ARM coprocessors ok CP1, CP2, CP3. Now, ok they are all sharing the database ok and the address this is a database ok, okay. this is memory sorry about this lines ok this is database. So now all these databases are connected to CP1, CP2, CP3 this is the ARM. Now why do I say the CPID is the location of the CPID has to be fixed that is the bit 8 to 11 needs to have a CPID the 4 bits need to have a CPID why let me ask a question as a system designer ok we have we are building a SOC system on a chip we bought the ARM IP core from ARM ok and this is a you know I am designing this for company A ok, this company A is not an expert in DSP ok, they do not have the expertise in DSP assume and they do not have a expertise in floating point, the uh, expertise they have it or not is a different issue and they are not in the business of designing this corporate program. but the company A is designing the SOC ok they buy IPs from different companies and build an SOC ok, they, they make a design and give it to companies like TSMC because this is a this company A is a fabless company assume ok, it does not have a fab of its own, it is not like Intel or Samsung or you know this company which have their own fabs, but assume ARM is working with the TSMC this is a Taiwan silicon manufacturing company which is 
a third party company which builds SOC for us, builds a chip for us for any other third party companies and then gives a chip, but to them we need to give a design. So, this company A is designing an SOC for their own application by buying IPs from different sources ok, they need not have to build these IPs in house and then they build an SOC integrating the you know AMBA bus ok, that I will talk about this bus, this is also AMBA specification which is defined by ARM. So, they build this SOC using the ARM IP maybe memory from different memory controller from different company ok and memory will be outside my controller may be inside and there may be a cache ok all these things will be there and then so many coprocessors will be there and then they will dedicate some IDs for each of them. When different companies so the DSP may come from a, a specific company the DSP core and the floating point core may come from different other company who are experts in you know uh, giving the IPs top IPs which can be integrated with the SOC and then another company may have a maybe a networking based or a, you know so maybe encryption uh, IP built as a coprocessor they will be providing it. Now, when if the coprocessors are provided by different companies they need to have some standard ok on how they are going to interpret the instructions why the instructions that are going to be seen the instruction which are going on this data bus are going to be seen by all of them please remember though the DSP instructions are handled by them the DSP instructions will be seen by this coprocessor also and it will be seen by this coprocessor also. Only thing is when they see that the IP ID the, co the coprocessor IDs are not matching with their own they may ignore it, but they will certainly see those instructions if they are on the system you know, on the bus data bus ok. So, they need to have a common understanding that whatever bit pattern here indicates that this is a coprocessor ID ok. Not only this they need to also know what the ARM provides ARM you know uh, gives what is the pattern it provides for the CDP instruction ok. This also should be known by it should be known to the coprocessor vendors. So, they when they are building the decode logic ok. They, they will put in this information in while decoding this instruction which are coming into a, their pipeline because I may be building a DSP core, but I might get the instructions which are meant for this guys other cores also, but I will ignore it if my IP the DSP IP that I am building is not the instructions my DSP instructions will have the ID which are specific to my CP ID if it is not matching I will ignore it. So, Similarly, they will also do other coprocessor vendors also will do the same thing, but they need to have a idea of what is the pattern followed by the instructions and then where they have to look for the CPID in the instruction. So, with the 32 bit they will be getting from the bus. So, they need to know where to how to interpret that that is why this first location of this CPID is are fixed. Whereas, once I know that it is meant for me, then the coprocessor may decide to interpret the remaining bits in the any way they want ok. I may have internally maybe only 8 registers in that case I do know though the arm provides me a 4 bit pattern for each of the operand I can restrict it to 3 bit pattern ok. And then I may have inside the process I may have multiple operations to be performed So I cannot co encode them in this limited 4 bit pattern. So, I may need a more pattern for that. So, it is completely implementation dependent how they interpret the remaining part is completely implementation dependent. So, we cannot now say whether they will do they will combine this and this or whatever order they do it does not matter, but this actually is a recommended by ARM coprocessor ARM company that ok you can have these parameters like this, but again it is left to the developer of this coprocessor ok but they need to be consistent with the where they will keep the CPIDs and then how they interpret this conditional flag ok. So, this is a convention coprocessor may redefine the use of all fields except this that is what I have explained you now. CP field is used to contain an identifying number of each coprocessor 
a coprocessor will ignore any instruction which does not match with their id so the conventional interpretation of the instruction is coprocessor should perform an operation specified in this and this field okay that among the what operation need to be performed is conventionally represented in this type bit position and these are the operands and this is you know this sorry these are the operands this and this r and m and this is the uh, destination okay so this is the convention you are free to follow if you like it otherwise as a coprocessor designer you can decide to do it the different different way okay i hope this is clear to you i took little more time to explain you okay sorry the on the contents are the result in crd okay that is the convention okay now e is this uh, looks very complex okay but very easy to understand this m clock all of you are aware okay this is a common the main clock so these are the different instructions in the pipeline this is the fetch state of the which pipeline this is shows which pipeline this shows arms pipeline okay arm so this are the, this is the order in which the instructions are given okay this is the starting address and then the instructions are going like this now you see that add comes the time wise time is like this so this is a first clock cycle maybe after that this second third fourth like this now add comes into the fetch first correct and then fetch add moves into the decode state and sub gets into fetch and then add moves into execute state and this sub moves into decode state and cdp instruction get fetched okay please remember while this is getting fetched the same way the coprocessor also fetching these instructions okay the instructions also flowing through their pipeline the way, same way now what happens when add reaches add reaches this coprocessor pipeline coprocessor will see that okay is this my instruction of course not it's a add and then the bit pattern shows that it's arm instruction it will ignore it and then next will who will enter the this thing sub will enter see actually it doesn't have to come to the execute stage itself because in the decode itself it will know that uh, add and sub are not its own instruction so it may throw that there itself okay execute stage may not even do anything now assume cdp is coming okay first time cdp comes here it gets fetched here in this clock cycle fetching is done by this clock cycle okay and then it gets decoded okay here now cdp when it gets decoded at this time now coprocessor knows that okay there may be multiple coprocessors all of them will look at the instruction and then one of them will choose that it is my own based on the id assume that this cp is one and this instruction is also meant for coprocessor one okay now this cp one will pick it okay it will say that okay i want to use it i want to um, execute it but here this is cp1 okay in this case here it was in decode both decoded and then it entered the execute stage of the arm okay similarly it should enter the execute stage of the coprocessor also but look at the signal here these three signals are important now as soon as the cdp instruction enters that means the conditional code is satisfied and uh, arm decides that okay this instruction should be executed it will bring this signal low to indicate that okay i have a coprocessor instruction to be executed any of the coprocessors in the system are you willing to take it now see here this signal the cpa signal has become low okay what does it mean one of the coprocessors in the system has accepted that saying that the absent coprocessor absent is low means it is present so one of the coprocessor says that oh this instruction belongs to me i want to take it but unfortunately i am busy now 
why it may be executing the previous instruction we don't know because this before this what happened i am not showing it here so the coprocessor is not currently ready to take it take the instruction so what happens can the arm processor carry on with the its own job it can't because until this instruction is accepted by the coprocessor arm has to wait okay so because it is nobody has taken up it no one guy one arm one coprocessor has said that okay i can take it but it is now busy so what happens is this is called busy wait so arm waits for the both the signal to be low okay now one of them is low doesn't guarantee that this will be this is done with that it has to be handed over so it is waiting okay and then at, uh, what happens during that time it fetches one more instructions from the pipeline okay see here it fetches this as well as this see this two instructions have been fetched after that because cdp is in the execute state then there may be two stages right arm core arm is having decode stage and fetch stage so fetch stage can have a sub instruction and decode stage can have a tst instruction and now cdp is in the execute stage so two more instructions are there after this in the it has been absorbed you know it has gone into the pipeline of the arm and similarly it has gone into the pipeline of the coprocessor also okay now what happens is the arm the coprocessor now makes it low here that means what it is accepting this instruction now it is going to execute the cdp instruction whatever it has been conveyed by the instruction now at this moment arm knows that somebody is owning it so arm make this high okay cdp instruction is accepted so it uh, takes an tst instruction into execute stage and make this high at that moment the the core which took the instruction also makes these two high okay that is the way the coprocessor is designed that means when the next instruction comes it can make it low or it can continue to low okay if suppose next uh, coprocessor instruction is there then it may based on the id one of the coprocessor may do drive the signal but at this moment this coprocessor which has accepted the sig, uh, instruction has made it high because it should not keep it low continue to keep it low that you know okay why once it has accepted it you should immediately bring it up because it should the arm should not interpret the next instruction okay to be accepted if it continues to be low even if the next instruction that which doesn't belong to this coprocessor is in the execute stage it may interpret the signal and then decide that okay this instruction coprocessor also this instruction is also accepted by coprocessor so these two signals should be brought to high immediately so avoid the confusion okay because this uh, signal remember the cpa and cpb are driven by multiple coprocessors if you remember recall it is connected to and gate inputs all the cp coprocessors are driving this input and then the finally and the output of this signals are going to arm core so that's how the interpretation is happening this is how the handshake happens so every instruction there may be the instruction which may be accepted immediately by the coprocessor or arm has to wait that is what is called busy wait cycle okay i hope this is clear to you once i once you understand this the remaining time no uh, timing sequence you will be able to follow easily now what is the cycle time taken by this instruction let us go back i said 1s and b into i b is number of busy byte cycles internal cycles okay how it is see the time taken by the coprocessor is how much time the coprocessor is occupying the arm execute stage that's a arm execute stage if an instruction is occupying the execute stage of the arm if it is occupying for how many cycle that is what is gets a cycle time right so how many busy waits are there it waits for this waits for this wait for this three three clock cycle okay it the arm is waiting for busy wait for coprocessor to be free and then it it waste one internal cycle one sequential cycle sorry one sequential cycle to come out of it okay see though 
Coprasa has brought it low at this moment, it cannot execute the next instruction immediately right, it can execute only here. So, one cycle here goes off, the sequential cycle goes off and then three busy weight cycles are happening here. So, three busy weight cycles, so number of busy weights the that many cycles and one internal cycle is what I am showing it as one sequential cycle and number of busy weight internal cycles are wasted ok. I do not want to call it as wasting, but yeah, of course, if it is a busy weight, it is a waste only. So, there is a possibility that busy weight is not there, the coprocessor is free, then this whole thing will be 0, only one sequential cycle will be taken by the arm immediately, arm can go to the next instruction, otherwise, it has to wait this many cycles, ok. So, B is the number of cycles spent in the coprocessor busy weight loop. So, busy weight needs to be done in case coprocessor is present and is busy with some earlier operation. I think this is clear to you. Arm busy weights until the coprocessor instruction is accepted by the coprocessor, that is what that many internal cycles are spent, ok. I hope this is clear to you why it has to wait so long. While the arm is waiting for the coprocessor to accept, ok, the instruction arm pipeline is stalled. Of course, you know uh, once the execute stage is stalled, everything else behind it also stalled. Okay. Once it is accepted, ARM continues with the execution. So, because it's a data processing instruction, ARM doesn't have to do anything. Because it is a totally something to do with the internal operation of the coprocessor. Because the instruction has all the operands required for the data processing, and it is has to be done by the coprocessor. So, ARM doesn't have to do anything except for wait till it is accepted then carry on with its job ok, that is why arm continues with the instruction stream as soon as it is accepted. Coprocessor may take its own time to complete the instruction because that is not in the control of arm, how many cycles the coprocessor may take depends on the complexity of the instruction and how, how it the particular coprocessor is implemented and how long will it take is the internal to the coprocessor and it is something to do with the what it is doing with, with its own register set. So, so, there is nothing to do with the arm ok, very good. Now, what is the format? So, it looks complex, but see this condition code you can mention either E Q N E or you know M I minus you no know, anything you can give. The CDP is is a, a indicator that it is a co pass data processing instruction, but the mnemonics the you no know, what you want to write here you no know, if you suppose you want to do f pad it is you can do that also ok it is something this in these instructions are interpreted by the assembler and it needs to have the awareness of the coprocessor so if it has the awareness you can put any instruction you want it will generate the equivalent encoding for this particular processor instruction and you know the p hash has to be given this is the number this is the coprocessor number Coprocessor ID, which will go into that location which I mentioned, you know, 8 to 11, I suppose, you know, in the format. This CP ID will go there, and then other parameters to the coprocessors can be left to the independent, you know, implementation. So, there are all some coprocessor registers, and then, you know, a specific type field and what operation to be performed, ok. These are all very specific to the particular instruction implementation, the coprocessor impl implementation, ok. So, these are all typical format, the P1 indicates that this is a coprocessor ID 1 and this is a coprocessor ID 2, it needs to do a job of this data processing based on what is mentioned by this processing, this is 10 may be indicating that it is a floating point addition or pi may be floating point multiplication we do not know. So, it is specific to the coprocessor implementation and then this is some type coprocessor type and these are all the coprocessor registers. So, this is the you know typical uh, example you know why if suppose convention is followed the C2 and C3 are taken as operands and this operation is performed and the result is put into C1 ok. Similarly, C2 and C3 are the operands and uh, this operation is performed and the result is put in C1. So, provided 0 is set ok, this is a conventional way of interpreting the instruction but it is left to the implementation. So, we have seen the data processing instruction. Now, data transfer ok, let me explain you why these instructions are required ok. 
see this is the arm code it has got a memory address bus data bus this is the data bus to the to the data bus all the coprocessors are connected okay data bus cp1 cp3 need not be all okay maybe see uh, these numbers are very unique though i said that 8 to 11 i think are the user you know cp id so maybe i need to give only this okay maybe i will say cp10 and cp11 or whatever okay the cp10 and 11 are co floating point coprocessor so i can say that cp9 okay okay and i and 9 i will given so cp8 suppose cp8 cp9 and cp10 are the other coprocessor now let us just think memory is here okay and arm is accessing the instruction from the memory memory has both data and instruction okay now i told you that arm is only generating address for accessing the instruction as well as data okay now what will the coprocessor do it you know it has got its four registers fine no problem and then it is getting the instructions from the arm core that is also no problem it is getting the instruction but do you think that cpu you no know, coprocessors can do its job without communicating with the memory it is not possible because all certain than the coprocessors or any processors for that matter you know including arm has got a limited registers right if it has to do a meaningful job a scientific application if the data has to be maintained in the memory and then brought to the processor and written back into the processor correct written back into the process memory sorry so so even coprocessors need some data from the memory and they should have a you know facility to write into the memory and read from the memory but i told that all the coprocessors are not connected to the address bus and they cannot generate address okay and the master is arm and only arm can generate the address and only arm can access the memory in that case what happens the coprocessor not will not be able to have any of their data in the memory correct so to help them do that there are some instructions which are helping them to transact with the memory but they have a limitation they can't generate address so what they do arm will generate the address for them and the coprocessors will give the data or take the data from memory can you see this arm will generate the address okay they arm will generate the address but data will be provided by coprocessor either if suppose if it is the right operation store operation okay if it is storing you no know, suppose i say you no know, data transfer i said so suppose it is a floating point you know it is a data store operation okay load operation you know load okay or store so if load means some value from memory is copied into the mem register so a load operation may be done and then some value from memory can be loaded into the coprocessor registers and then coprocessor does some operation with that and then it does a store operation to store it into the memory okay so it is possible now with this instructions but only caveat is that the addresses have to come from arm and data will be provided by the coprocessor so they have to be coordinated please remember it can't be arbitrary because memory is a common element memory is getting the address from arm and getting the data from the coprocessor so but for as far as memory is concerned once address is provided it will provide the data out if it is a read operation it will provide the data out if if it is a write operation once address is given it will expect somebody to put the data into the data bus so there should be a close meet between the three parties who are the parties arm coprocessors one of the coprocessors and memory so when any data needs to be transferred from between coprocessor and memory okay arm provides the address 
and co-processor provides the data or accepts the data. You should understand this concept very well. Okay, otherwise the rest of the session will become irrelevant. So it is a data transfer between co-processor and memory, but address is provided by the ARM. I will tell you why it is. Why the control is always with ARM? Okay, but at that moment, please remember the address is generated by ARM and the data is either based on the read or write operation. Data either is provided by a co-processor or accepted by the data co-processor. Let us go. So this is the format. Now, now you will be able to understand. If you recall all the low code LDM and SDM instructions that I provided earlier, okay, the the instruction format looks similar. Okay, these are all the things which you have seen earlier in these instructions. Okay, but this will be might be different. We you know, okay, I don't recall what was the encoding done for LDM LDM, but this whole thing gives an indication that. This is a data transfer instruction and between a coprocessor and memory. Okay. Now let us see what are the operands which are read by the coprocessor and which are read by ARM. See, I did a color coding to say that blue color indicates that it is the, the uh, this bit patterns or this operands are read by coprocessor. So I said this is a coprocessor destination register, okay. Source or destination register. This is a coprocessor number. Please, please remember 8 and 11 between these two, the coprocessor ID should be there. Now, this is what this is an offset. Offset is to do with some data operation. And what is this? This is a base register. And whether is this a ARM register or a coprocessor register? This is a ARM register. Why? When I say this is a base register, then that is what is used for address generation. And who is generating the address? ARM is generating the address. So the instruction should indicate which of the registers in ARM can be used as a base register for generating the address. So it has to be generated by ARM. So it should know which register to be used. So that is given by the instruction. So this particular bit field will be used by ARM. Okay. Not only this, including all these patterns, all these patterns except this blue color are all used by ARM ok remember that are you able to understand. So only thing is because of the size restriction uh, now only 8 bit immediate offset is given but it is given in verbs ok that means what whatever is offset is given it will be shifted by 2 bits so that it becomes a byte address ok and then source and destination register is a this is a coprocessor register. Why do we need to mention a coprocessor register? I told, okay, ARM is there, memory is there, and coprocessor is there, okay. Now, there is a transaction, either transfer, either one, uh, well, let us simply, uh, simple thing, let us load instruction, let is there. Suppose, suppose the load means what? Some value in memory has to be copied into one register in the CP1. This is load, okay. And then uh, now suppose write. If it is a store, okay, some register in the CP has to be written into the memory. So in some particular address. Now this address has to come from here. So ARM has to generate the address, okay. It has to compute the address for this memory transaction. Whereas the data needs to be provided by coprocessor. So if it is a store, it will provide a data to be written into the memory. If it is a load, it will take the data given out by the memory into some register. So, so you need a register here, which will be mentioned. That is called CRD. Similarly, for generating the address, you need a base register here. That is called RN here. Got it? So RN is a register used for the address generation and C C. Maybe I will write it here. CRD is a destination or source register used for the data values in the coprocessor. And offset is something to do with the arithmetic. Now, how it has to be generated inside the other, how it has to be generated by the ARM. So, those 
offset is used and based on whether it is a load or store this bit will be set and whether the address the newly computed address can be written back into the base register or not is decided by this bit pattern and transfer length to just to say that whether it is a single or multiple word ok. Multiple means it does not know how many ok multiple transactions are happening ok. So, that will be indicated by one bit pattern either single instruction single transfer or multiple transfer ok one um, transfer length and then whether the addresses are to be incremented or decremented whether it has to be incremented before or after because similar to the original address mode that you learnt in the ARM code. I hope this is clear to you ok. This is the very crux of the problem ok you should know this is how the instruction is interpreted. Now, this class of instruction is used to load LDC or store a value a subset of code process register directly to memory. So, you can have either one value or multiple values I will tell you how it is done. Now, ARM is responsible for supplying the memory address and the code processor supplies or accepts the data and code processor also controls the number of words transferred this is very very important ok. Let me take some other color. So, number of words is very very important you should remember that ok that is also controlled by coprocessor apart from the accepting the data or providing the data ok it also controls the number of words I will tell you how it is done in the next uh, slide. Then CP field identify the coprocessor which has to do the job and coprocessor will only respond if its number matches of course this you know. Now let us see see so, RN is the base register I explained to you CRD is the field and the n bit contains the information for coprocessor which may be interpreted in different ways by different coprocessor. So, that is number of words ok, but by convention CRD is the number to be transferred or the first register where more than one is to be transferred see I will tell you the transaction can be a single word ok in that case one register may be transferred suppose arm is here CP is there only one register is transferred to the memory that is one way another one is multiple transfer that means multiple transfer means it may say that I will mention the first register and then from till the end of that <coughs> suppose no it is again implementation different so, C R D ok uh, C R 0 to C R 15 ok coprocessor has a 15 register and then here you mentioned that the transfer has to happen from suppose C R 4 then the coprocessor and then you say that it is a multiple transfer ok n bit is set then multiple transfer that means it may indicate to the coprocessor that ok starting from C R 4 you till C R 15 you transfer either transfer it to the memory or load it from memory. So, it is all implementation dependent ok it is nothing to do with the but you know you cannot say that this is how it will be implemented, but the coprocessor can internally decide how many transfers are to be done ok. So, n bit is used to say whether it is a one of two transfer length options ok. So, if n is equal to 0 a single transfer and then maybe a all register starting from some particular coprocessor register. Now, this will give you some understanding of how the number of transactions are decided see the whole thing up to this point whatever I explained earlier is same ok. So, we do not have to go through that pipeline it all as well. Now, at this moment the instruction the LDC instruction which is load coprocessor has come to the execute stage ok of ARM similarly in the coprocessor also. Now, coprocessor has said that I am available ok I am, I am not coprocessor absent is low means it is present and busy is low means it is not busy that means coprocessor accepted the instruction that means what the coprocessor is going to do the perform the data with the help of arm it is going to perform the data transfer. Now, see this instruction is you know fetched from after this LDC reaches the execute stage this is also fetched from the memory this arm is fetching this instruction. Now, from now onwards ok up to this point the data is provided or accepted by coprocessor ok CP data 
what is going on on the database is CP data. Now, who is generating the address? Address is generated by the ARM and the co-processor is accepting it. Now, how does the ARM know when to stop generating the address? See, when I say that it is a multiple transfer, the address has to be incremented, right? Now, please remember all the transfers are 32 bit, okay? Similar to our LDM and SDM, 32 bits. That means four bytes. So it has to increment by four the address. So starting address is computed based on the LDC instruction, and then it keeps incrementing it by four. So suppose this is address 100 is generated by ARM. 104 will be here. Sorry, from this onwards, 100, and the 104, 108. So it is generating the addresses. Now you remember for this transfer to happen here in this cycle the address is generated one cycle ahead. So that is why you see that this instruction is this instruction is fetched during this cycle and uh, at that time the new address for the data transfer is happening here and then those new the data values are actually you know uh, transacted over the bus. So who is reading it or writing this uh, data the copacitor is accepting it or it may be generating the data but address is generated by the ARM and then when this particular BC goes up that indicates that coprocessor is done with its multiple transfers okay coprocessor decides how many number of transfers happens how it is done I will erase this to give you number of transfers is indicated by coprocessor by keeping this BC for that many cycles in this case four words have been transacted and it has been in controlled by the coprocessor CPB is generated by coprocessor. So by keeping it low it informs the arm that do not go away from the LDC execution continue to generate the address ok. Please remember it is not similar to CDP where the arm can just ok once uh, somebody has accepted it. ARM cannot go to the next instruction because ARM has got the job of generating the address. So it cannot throw this LDC out of execute stage and then take the next instruction test. It cannot do that because it has got a job to generate the address and it will generate it will be able to generate the address only when this LDC instruction is in the execute stage of the ARM pipeline. So ARM will continue to be in the or uh, uh, the LDC instruction will continue to be in the execute stage of the ARM till this DC goes low or uh, sorry high that means when this happens coprocessor indicates that ok I have done with the transfer now you, you can stop generating the address. So at that moment only it generates the address for fetching the next instruction and it goes ahead with the execution of the testing session the next instruction which was there in the paper. So can you understand this the transfer is happening with the help of ARM and data is either provided or accepted by the coprocessor and ARM has to keep that instruction the data transfer instruction in the execute stage based on how the CPB is given by the coprocessor and then the transfer completes. This is very very important I hope this is clear to you ok. Now cycle time. Can you understand this? I have explained this for the ARM instruction. So, one non sequential cycle because of what this particular data transfer is non sequential because of this is a new address generated and then rest of the data transfers are sequential because it is all adjacent addresses as it is happening. So, 1 n and then how many words are transferred minus 1 is the sequential and then this instruction was in the execute stage for one more S cycle ok. See here one more S cycle it was here and DC weight was the 0 here ok it immediately it, it was accepted otherwise DC weight also will be added. So S and N minus 1 S and 1 N see 1 N and then number of words minus 1 S ok number of words transferred plus 1 S anyway for the execution address generation ok. So, 
effectively this will be n s ok and one capital N that is non sequential address first address will be non sequential. So, that is what you will see 1 n 1 n minus 1 s and busy weight i ok. Now, this non sequential address uh, uh, sorry I will tell you here how many are there see 1 how many seconds 5 are there right 5 are there how many words are transferred 4 words. So, 4 anyway is due to the 4 words transferred except and then plus 1 is here that is non sequential. So, 3 plus 1 4 cycles are used by this instruction ok. So, that is why you see this that this is a data transfer ok one second ok. So, so this is cycle if it is there then it will have one not that many number of internal cycles and then one non sequential cycle followed by n minus 1. So, that many words are transacted ok. So, ARM is responsible for providing the address used by the memory system I have explained to you already the addressing modes available are all LDM similar to this this note however that the offsets are limited originally it was 12 bits in ARM mode, but in focus and it will be only 8 bit offset and it is shifted by left 2 bits because the offset is given for the words because you are very clear we are sure, sure that it is a word transfer only can happen and then whether it is subtracted or offset is subtracted or added is based on this bit pattern because plus hash you do or minus hash offset you do that decides the addition or subtraction. So, whether the calculation will be performed before or after that is pre indexing or post indexing is decided by this based on whether you are maintaining the offset inside or outside this. So, you should go back to the LDM addressing modes to recall this bit patterns ok. So, this is how it is done and then W is the overwritten whether the base register can be written back or not is provided by this the value of the base register modified by the offset is is pre index injection is used to address the transfer of the first word ok. So, the address computer is used by the for the first word transfer afterwards it will be incremented. So, second word will be incremented by 4 bytes because it is always a word transfer and the address will be incremented by 1 word for each subsequent transfer always I, I told you that in the sequential addresses addresses will be incremented because that is how memory is programmed. So, this is a general pattern ok it is nothing specific it is a you can it is again you know application specific. So, you can mention LDC or STC and then mention the conditional code and then which coprocessor ID and how to generate the address and then say which coprocessor to copy that uh, value to or from ok. So, these are all some you know example usages of instruction. So, take this as a RFI as a base address add 24 to that and use that value to access the memory and put it it is a store. So, C 3 is coprocessor is copied into this address and then R 5 is updated because uh, 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 exclamation mark is there. So, write that happens and what is this P 2 this is the coprocessor P 2 the coprocessor 2 is used for this transfer. Although the address offset is expressed in bytes ok here you can express it in bytes, but internally it will be stored as a word because you I told you that offset is left shifted by left shift by 2 bits because it is a word transfer the offset can be uh, right shifted and stored and then internally ARM processor left shift by 2 bits and uses that address. So, the assembler will adjust the offset accordingly. Now, there is one speciality here R n is R 15 the value used will be the address of the instruction plus 8 bytes. Now, let me explain to you this ok if suppose by chance we are writing R n as this R n as R 15 suppose. Then we should know that which R 15 is used it is the whatever is the PC here suppose this instruction is at 100 
the R15 will be 108. That's all. Okay. 108 will be used as R15 value. And right back into R15 should not be used. So if you are using instead of R5, if you are using R15, you should not write uh, right back. That is a condition. Okay. Assembler will give an error. It will not accept that kind of an instruction. Co-processor data transfer is not available in thumb It is similar to any other co-processor instruction. It is not available in thumb scale. Okay. Now one more thing. Data abort is possible in the co-processor data transfer also. The, if the address is legal, but the memory manager generates a abort. Okay. Now see, a abort has to be there irrespective of whether the transfer is between ARM and memory. Okay. Or ARM, the co-processor and the memory. The transfer may be between these two. Okay. But abort should be allowed because there may be that memory is apparently the floating point. Mem no thing is not available in the memory. Then Abort has to be generated. Now, who will execute the abort handler? ARM will execute, not this guy. ARM will execute the abort handler, okay, and then perform the job required for avoiding that abort and then restart the instruction. So, it is similar to a data abort happening in the ARM processor. So, the write back of the modified base will be take a, will take place, but all other processes will be preserved. So, if suppose write back is mentioned in the base register, okay. So, that write back value will be written into the value, into the register. Suppose so R and hash you are given, then the base register will be written with the write back value if abort happens. After the after the writing the value, the abort, so it is very specific to the abort handler how you write the abort handler for co processor. So, I am not going into the details of this because it is very, very specific. But I am just giving you that you have a back in of your back of your mind that a data transfer with the co-processor and memory also can create an abort. And in that case, how does the ARM behave? How does the ARM behave? If the co-processor is partly responsible, the why I am saying co-processor is partly responsible means because the data is provided by the co-processor and the address is generated by three party transfer, right? Three people are involved, ARM, memory, and co-processor. So if abort has to restart the instruction again, you know, if you have to restart the instruction, then co-processor also should be partly involved in this. So co-processor may know that this abort has happened. Okay, there may be some signal where it will come to know that there is a abort uh, because the pipeline flush will happen, and similarly pipeline flush will happen. So the three party will work together to resolve this issue. Okay, memory anyway is a dumb dumb. Uh, entity here, but ARM and co-processor will work on this abort handling and must ensure that any sub subsequent actions co-processor takes can be repeated when the instruction is read tried. See on a data abort you remember the instruction will be read tried. that means what it will be executed again after the abort handler is completed. So we have to make sure that the co-processor and ARM keeps the register in status in such a way that it does not impact the correctness of the program. Okay. So, do not bother too much about it, but I want you to be aware that there is a possibility of a data abort in the co-processor transfer also. So, okay. Now, the last uh, register instruction type which is a register transfer, again let me come back, ARM is there, co-processor is there, okay. data bus is there, ARM, CP, memory. Okay. Now we saw that co-processor can do its own job using CDP instruction. We saw that co-processor and memory between the memory data transfer can happen using the co-processor data transfer instruction. Okay, this is CDP. Inside that something happening is done by CDP. Transfer between memory is CDT, but there is one more transfer possible. Okay, that is this is the master. I said ARM is the master. And co-processor slave. Okay, and I also told you that conditional execution is done. Okay, based on the flags inside the co-processor. Sorry, inside the ARM processor. So, if suppose you write a program. Okay, let me give an example. ARM code you are written. Okay, ARM code. Okay, and then so co-processor a flag you are done. Now, suppose if a flag Results in a zero. Okay, suppose this 
you are writing that register uh, CR1 assume the F add result is written into coprocessor register 1 ok. Suppose if it is a 0 value is written into after the end of this instruction ok. Now down the line somewhere I want to if ok uh, suppose branch if floating point results in a 0 I want to go to some other location suppose uh, no I want to go to the label L1 ok otherwise I want to execute this instruction. See this the floating point operation is done along with the ARM instruction. So, there should be some coherence otherwise what is the use of having some ARM code running and the DSP code running they need to be in sync ok. Some results of this need to reflect on the control flow of the ARM instruction otherwise what is the use of this whole thing running in a single application right. So, there should be some control flow possible based on the outcome of the operation done by the coprocessor. Now, how can it be done? Because though floating point also maybe I am taking that example because it is very easy to comprehend so, uh, assume the floating point is a scientific notation which I will be covering in the next class, but that coprocessor is having some flags ok. They also have some flags, but these flags are not accessible from the ARM code they are internal to it. Now, how can ARM this change the control flow ok without having an access to this it is not possible. So, to, to provide this option there is a way that we can transfer some information across the ARM and the copras. See this is a next set of instruction that is called register transfer. Register transfer is what registers in ARM ok ARM has got some set of register coprocessor has got some set of register these values can be transferred between them, but how ARM interprets the values and how coprocessor interprets the value they are different because here they are all integers ok. Maybe coprocessor may be all floating point arithmetic ok flow float, but suppose if there are some data transfer you know instruction converts the format and then puts it in the ARM core then we can the values can be exchanged between the ARM core and the coprocessor as well as some conditional flags ok flags can also be exchanged between them ok. So, two things ok uh, let me come back see flag is one thing ok oh, sorry. So, flags ok can also be exchanged between a coprocessor and a ARM processor in that case what happens suppose I have a 0 flag here ok in the coprocessor. I if I am able to transfer this value to 0 flag in the ARM ok then what I can do I can do this operation if my floating point arithmetic resulted in a 0 no I want to control to go to L1, L1 is some code which ARM is accessing. So, I can control the flow of ARM based on some outcome of this which is happening. So, there should be some provision for the floating point registers to be transferred or as well as the flags of the coprocessor to be transferred to the ARM coprocessor. So, the conditional flow can be effectively done. So, this is the need for having this set of instructions ok. So, let us see how these instructions help us and how is it implemented. See there are two MRC and MCR if you recall there were MRS and MRSR, MRSR instructions earlier in ARM ok. What is this? this it was a CPSR ok transferring to some register ok you can transfer the CPSR to some register always the convention is like this right. So, so or you can do a register to CPSR ok that is S is a flag register. So, this was the instruction which we saw sometime back in the ARM code. So, this same convention coprocess to ARM register is this instruction and the register the ARM register to coprocess is this it is MCR instruction. So, the conventions are same always it is like something R equal to C 
okay this you can interpret it as r equal to c if you want to just remember right you write this then you say r is for arm registers you know, easy to remember c is because c it is a coprocessor register so coprocessor register is written into arm this is the convention this is arm register is written into coprocessor register that's all very simple similarly s is a flag so register is a arm register that was the convention we followed there okay so very easy now this instruction is not as complex as the memory transfer instruction only thing is the parameters are more okay you may transfer see here crn is a coprocessor operand this is another operand coprocessor operand and then rd is a register you know this rd is a arm register so either you may do this operation and write into arm or arm will be written, written into some register uh, in the coprocessor okay so arm stores the destination register so rd is given but doesn't mean uh, mean that it is only a destination register it is also a source register okay similarly coprocessor also can the, this register is a source register source or destination similarly this is source or destination okay so the transfer can be between anything between coprocessor to arm or arm to coprocessor and this is another operand register uh, rm crm where is it is this is operand register okay so it could be a load or store and then you can even men you can perform some operation and then transfer it okay i will give you an example suppose uh, there will be uh, an instruction will be coming later okay uh, you have a floating point coprocessor okay floating point coprocessor and this is the arm arm is there suppose you have a value 1.0 okay in the uh, cr0 of 1.0 is stored in coprocessor register 0 you want to transfer it to r0 of arm okay cp cr0 cr0 you want to write into r0 here this is 1.0 which will become 1 here okay because it's a two's complement notation and this is a floating point representation you cannot have the same bit pattern here and the, you try to you know interpret this as a 1 so there should be some trans transition happening the, 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 this pattern has to be transferred to some format here to make this as a 1. So, that operation can be performed here mentioned here. So, that the coprocessor before transferring the value it does this transition and then puts it here. Because this values how they are represented in ARM register and the coprocessor registers are different. So, you cannot have the same bit pattern in both the places and expect that to work. So, there should be some trans transform transformation has to be done. The transformation is specified by this particular operation mode ok. Ok good, so let us see this class of instruction is to communicate information directly between arm and the coprocessor. So, an example will be a fixed floating point value held in a coprocessor. So, this is a fix I mentioned that 1.0 is done as 1 in arm ok this is CP. This is called a fix operation, fix this floating point value into a integer value ok that is called is a, an instruction which is used by the floating point processor ok. Where floating point number is converted into a 32 bit integer and the result is then transferred to arm register. Similarly you know a, a float operation is suppose uh, 3 is here in arm if it has to be written into a floating point register it has to be written into as a 3.0. So, there should be a trans transformation that is called float ok. There are different instructions which are used. So, we do not have to remember this, but you understand the concept when any data is transferred between arm and the coprocessor, the coprocessor interprets the data in a different way and the arm interprets it in a different way. So, they need to be transferred transformed into the other format that is what is achieved while transferring these values that is all is important here. So, an important use of MRC instruction is to communicate control information directly. I told you that CPS are flags of arm you want to change it ok, but let me try to see that you remember this or not ok arm. In arm I mentioned to you that MSR and MRF instructions are used fine ok, but you cannot have a move instruction operating on CPSR correct. You cannot say move CPSR into R1 you cannot do that you before that what you suppose this is what you want to do 
what you need to do let me say change the color okay what you need to do you will say that m yes okay mrs r o 2 suppose and then cpsr okay now what happens cpsr is copied into r2 and then you will say move okay directly if you want to insert in r1 you can say that okay okay why do i go around this so r1 comma cpsr what does it mean i cannot access using any of these instructions i need to use a special instruction to move from cpsr to some register value okay so let me come back here now what is the I, I i told you that if you want to have a control flow you want to change it you need to have the flags in the cps you no know, flags in the control processor tp flags here to be transferred to arm okay arm has a flags in the cps arm to change the control flow of arm instruction how can that be done there is a special way if the rd is okay you can use this instruction only m r c that means what co processor is moving to register now suppose here you say r15 as the register okay arm register and then say that the flags in the co processor okay in the c co processor now what happens is when you want to say flags in this is moved here whatever is the value in the four bit lower four bits okay of what you transfer is actually not written into r15 it is written into cpsr of okay cps of the register the cps of four bits is there no those four bits are written into this, this is when you mention the transfer co processor to register of arm and then say that rd is r15 then what is done is it is treated as when a co processor register transfer to arm has r15 as a destination register the bits 31 to 28 of the transferred word are copied into these flags and other bits remain in a unaffected and pc also not affected so it is a indirect way of saying i want to transfer the flags inside the co processor to the flags in the arm processor so what you should do it is a co processor will have some set of instructions inside so you have to execute them and then bring the flags of the co processor may be into one of the registers of co processor okay in similar to msr there may be some instruction so we have to execute that instruction to bring that into some one of the co processor registers and then transfer that to r15 of the arm once you do that what happens the flag value has come into the cpsr of the arm and then we can have a code in the arm say that okay branch eq you can say or some conditional check you can change the flow of control so you have to execute arm in sync with the co processor instructions so there is a provision provided by the arm to perform this job okay so what are the instruction fields i explained to you already destination register based on whether mcr or mrc the rest of the fields are interpreted by co processor cp indicates the co processor id so register transfer now one more thing if suppose register transfer if you are doing with r15 as a source register okay suppose arm is here okay you want to transfer m cr suppose arm register to co processor register and suppose the register what you are mentioning as the arm side this is the rd this is the source register here suppose you are mentioned this as a r15 so what value okay r15 value from here is going to the co processor some cp register okay which is mentioned by this guy suppose cp1 okay register 1 Uh, sorry cp id so register 1 now r15 is going into cp you no know, some register 1 of this then you may need that you want the current uh, memory okay with the code or r15 where it is pointing at that address you want to transfer what you get actually is pc plus 12 it's a very you know 
a good uh, question to answer you know think about why it is so let me give a you know example add is there one arm instruction and then you are executing m c r okay and then there is subtract instruction and then there is a test instruction and then there is one mul instruction suppose hmm? now when this instruction is mcr is what registered to and then you have mentioned that r15 needs to be transferred okay to some co pass register r1 now when this is in execute stage this is accessed this is accessed okay means pc is here suppose this is the address address on under 108 now this is also fetched okay now for doing this tra register transfer register transfer has to happen through data bus only right arm is here and co processor is here the transfer has to happen through data bus right that means what the instruction fetch has to be stopped for a while so after uh, accessing this instruction it will be incremented by another four that is one or c and this value will be written into r15 okay and then this will be executed so because I told you that when this is in execute state other two instructions have been already accessed and the PC is also incremented by 4 since we need we cannot access this instruction we need the data bus for trans, you know transferring the value which is mentioned here to be to the co processor we need the data bus. So the fetching of you know free fetching has to be stopped so but instruction address would have been incremented to the next value which happens to be this value plus 12. Okay, now if you are having R15 as the source register to be moved into coprocessor register, what you will be getting is a plus 12 value. That is what is extended by this bullet. Okay, I hope this is clear to you. So this is the timeline. Um, MCR is come. Okay, MCR is in the execute stage. Okay, now. It is bringing the thing low. Okay, it's a register transfer between the coprocessor and the um, ARM processor. So ARM is delaying it by one cycle because it is already the memory. You no, know, it needs a transfer, you no know, data bus. So it has to complete this fetch. So it is completing this fetch, and then it is making this low. By the time this also accepted immediately. Then what is going on? This is the value in the register, either in coprocessor or in the um, ARM processor is exchanged, and then it comes back. See, please remember this can need not be completed in one cycle. It can take multiple cycles because, if you recall, it just now I mentioned that while transferring the fixed or float, the coprocessor can perform some operation, especially when it is supposed to transfer a coprocessor value into a ARM register it will take some time to do that. So at that time the busy weight will be more, but if it is between arm and but you know, from arm to the coprocessor, the register value is copied into a coprocessor and then it is performing the job. So arm can continue with its execution during this time. So the delay will be there only when CP to arm transfer because CP has to perform some transformation and then send it to arm. Whereas that is not true in this case when ARM value it is ready actually the integer value whatever is there is ready to be transferred to CP and then the transformation job that CP has to do is internal to it. So ARM may not have to wait for it. So the busy cycle will be brought down brought up so that ARM can continue with execution and the transfer will can complete okay. So this is a very uh, subtle point that you should uh, remember. So cycle time is one cycle to no one sequential cycle for the execution and then if there is a wait one B wait and then one coprocessor cycle because this is called coprocessor cycle because we are transferring between ARM and coprocessor that is what is called a coprocessor cycle and why is this plus one is there apart from BC wait that is because I will tell you see it is only for RC. RC is what coprocessor to register right. So ARM register so when 
from the data bus when the value comes into the arm arm core it lies in the data in register okay if you call data in register and then it will be taken into the register set so it will involve one internal cycle to do this this transfer okay that's why this plus one is fair is there only for coprocessor to register whereas that is not there for coprocessor uh, register to coprocessor okay because the register value is put into the data out register and then immediately it is taken out but when we are reading in something from the it is same is similar to reading from memory okay though it is reading from a coprocessor it is similar to reading from a memory because it is coming through the data bus so it will take one more cycle internal cycle to transfer it to the register we you know destination register that's why plus one is there okay and then uh, this is a format so don't get to worry too much it is very very specific to the implementation so this is the cpid and then you can mention the which uh, arm register you are talking about and then which are the coprocessor registers can be mentioned here so these are different type of instruction okay this is the coprocessor id 2 and we want the this is what c to r that means coprocessor register okay perform some operation file on c5 and c6 and transfer the 32 bit word result into r3 okay do some operation based on this and then transfer it to r3 now what is mcr move r4 into this okay and then use the both operand to no do some operation based on what the value was come into it and then write into c6 okay so whatever our value read from r4 you do this and then this is if it is condition is to transfer the coprocessor to register okay uh, operation is 9 and then type is 2 and it is written into r3 and use both c5 and c6 okay and then transfer the value into r3 that's what is the each instruction mean so with this we have come to the end of coprocessor instructions see these are all very you know a high level view of how the coprocessor instructions are provided and how they are used okay you should if this knowledge is enough once you have this background information then you can go into the details of any particular coprocessor implemented for arm then you will be able to understand some of the instructions in the coprocessor may be implemented using one of the three type of the instructions okay it will be encoded as one of the three type of instructions okay so and you will be able to appreciate how the transfer is happening how many cycles they take how the memory if it is something to do with the memory how the address is generated by arm and how the coprocessor is interfaced with that so i hope this talk was useful for you to understand this and uh, in the next class we will talk about coprocessor uh, sorry floating point arithmetic assets the in representation and then we will take a look at the vector floating point processor in the following lecture okay thank you very much for your attention i enjoyed sharing this knowledge with you hope it was useful and enjoy your reading and uh, on all thank you very much see you in the next class